sea level to ski, le ski level. You pointed out something to me yesterday that we're actually below sea level. Uh, Badwater Basin is 280 yeah. feet below sea level. So we manufacture equipment for everything in between, from below sea level to our highest pass is Tioga Pass at 9,945 feet. Our mission, provide safe and reliable equipment at the right place at the right time. Is our uh, headquarters DOE logo, uh, build and maintain with pride. Uh, headquarters equipment shop was built in uh, 1918. Uh, Caltrans moved into the building in 1921, and we continue to uh, still do business there today, manufacturing equipment just like we did back in 1921. Uh, our fleet was founded on the Liberty Truck World War I surplus equipment. Um, we no longer have that equipment that, that I know of. Couple pictures of the facility there. That's in, inside the facility and, and the uh, the front door where we run our trucks down the middle of the shop. Um, headquarters is manufacturing is made up in a, of an elite team of engineering and production. There's approximately 85 members combined between engineering and the shop staff. Uh, laser printer. Um, in the engineering department, we have the laser printer that we uh, use to mock up pieces and parts um, to, um, if we don't have something, but we have the dimensions of it, such as a PTO, we need to find out if it's gonna fit between a frame rail. We'll print, print up a, a mock up of a PTO that's the exact dimensions and we'll be able to get our uh, design set up. The truck that's gonna be at the static equipment show after uh, the presentations today has this pump on it. This pump weighs approximately 175 pounds. So when we're setting up the truck, doing the design and fixing brackets and trying to figure out how to mount it on there and hose routing, 175 pounds is a lot to muscle. So we printed out a, uh, an exact replica of the pump. It weighs about two pounds. Gabe Pineda is doing a CAD 3D modeling. He's one of our engineers, design engineers. And uh, recently we had gotten a ferro arm. Is anybody familiar with what a ferro arm is? Okay, it's a scanner. You can see it. they're working on a Robla blower fan and they get three points around that circle and it'll start drawing a CAD drawing of that fan. So they take that probe and move it around to each hole that's on that. It has about 80 holes on it and it'll replicate in a drawing so that we can reproduce that fan to the exact dimensions. Um, shop staff, like I said, about 85 members shop and engineering combined. A machine shop, um, we have a full, mach full machine shop that has four axis CNC milling machine that uh, we do quite a bit of work with. Um, blower steering arms, milled out of a solid piece of uh, iron. We could not purchase the, uh, the arms that we needed to, we had changed some axles and the arms that came with it weren't the right ones, they weren't the right dimensions to get the angles right. So we milled them out and made them. Uh, steering gear box, we had a, a failure on this one here that it just continued to fail, continued to fail. And finally our machinist had taken it and did some changes to it and put some radiuses along the inside and the outside of these corners right here and hasn't failed since. It, it's also an item that we couldn't purchase. Uh, bar feeder makes our uh, shear bolts for our blower fans and our snow plows. And also you can be used as a lathe uh, blower fan hub, we cut a, a seal um, recess for a seal right inside the, the inside of that hub there. Um, this is our workhorse, a prog programmable lathe. Uh, that thing runs all day long, to turn anything. It just runs and runs and runs. Sheet metal shop. So we're under construction here, if that looks kind of funny with the tarps on the ground. We just recently had our shop um, pressure washed and painted. Um, Cincinnati Pro Forms 135 ton uh, press that we form steel with. This, again, is another one of our workhorses. We use this thing all day long to make brackets as such. Uh, 350 ton press does the bigger stuff, our cross members. This machine will do up to half inch plate 12 feet long. Um, we've been up to one inch plate on this machine as well. Not so long, but we've done it. Cincinnati shear, again, half inch plate 12 feet long. Shear it just like butter. It happens so fast, it's just quick. It's amazing. Makes me nervous to watch it. Uh, hem bandsaw. This saw is uh, automated. It, it will feed and cut different angles on each end of, if you're cutting tubing, um, it'll continuously feed and cut two different angles on each end if you set up the programming for it. It's a big time saver. Uh, laser room. With our laser room, we have eliminated drilling holes. We have eliminated a lot of grinding, just cleaner pieces. That laser will cut up to inch and an eighth plate. 
that piece that you're holding there was also cut in that. Not only that, it will etch the item number on it. So when you engineering and design create a drawing and you're putting stuff together, each item has the, draw, the uh, part number on it. So it's essentially it's a big model as you're assembling it. Also in the field, they'll highlight the pieces that they needed off of a drawing and send it to us and tell us we, we need these pieces, three or four pieces off of a, a drawing. This is a, an example that the supplier did to demonstrate what the machine can do, what it's capable of. This is a multi-piece uh, snowblower fan. Originally, this fan was one piece. It was all welded together. And to increase uptime, we've worked on designing these pucks that you can unbolt each one of these, these items and replace them as needed. Otherwise, you had to disassemble the whole front of the blower fan and take the volute out and the whole deal to re replace it. These pucks, you can unbolt them and cut them out once the threads get bad on them, cut them out and replace them in the machine. Uh, wire harness manufacturing room. I'm not going to pass this around because it's kind of bulky, but you guys are welcome to look at it. So our wire harness manufacturing room manufactures anywhere from two to 3,000 wire harnesses a year. Um, the truck that we're going to look at today, it has a main harness and nine sub-harnesses on that truck alone. This is one of the main harnesses here. It is um, OEM quality. OEM or better. Um, we have quality control. We have a pull tester for quality control and uh, we visually inspect everything that is built. The drawings and the uh, bill of materials is done w by design working on a pilot. We'll lay the harness in and we'll get all of our exact measurements and all of the pieces and, and the breakouts where everything needs to go. And then design will create the drawing and bill of materials and we will work off of a drawing that uh, Again, we can provide to the field if there's an accident or something catches on fire. They need to replace a harness, they can call us up and give me, tell me, give me this item and we can easily create it for them. Layout boards, so we put all of our components on these boards where these connectors need to go to and pretty much lay everything out in the manner that it needs to be and then we'll loom it up, tape it up. Vertical storage, we have carousels that house all of our um, connectors and bodies, uh, connector bodies and all of our wiring. This is a complete drawing that I had mentioned earlier that this comes out to the wire room and they manufacture off of a uh, drawing that design had created. Um, body manufacturing. Yesterday we talked a little bit about restriping. This is one of the bodies that's going to be a paint tote for that, that project coming up here pretty soon. Um, <clears throat> again, a complete drawing from design. So we do manufacture a lot of our, our bodies in-house. Um, a lot of them we get from PIA using our design through prison industry. Um, component manufacturing. So all of our components are also done in-house. When we get it into a time such as we are right now, we will look at having vendors help us out with that, um, supplying components as we're building trucks. And we try to receive them on time so that we can keep our run flowing. Paint and final shop. Um, we have a full paint shop. We have three booths, a mixing bank. They also do all of the... Um, stripes and the delineation for the uh, all, all of the equipment that you see in, throughout California. We recently upgraded our stripe what two two years ago to uh, that highly reflective 3M material there that you can pass around. Um, again, three paint booths, uh, 53 feet and two at 45 feet. Just recently acquired a shot blast machine that has saved us about $100,000 in preparation materials per year. Um, not to mention that um, preppers tend to have an uh, issue with carpal tunnel. They're running a DA all day long and using their hands in tight places quite a bit. So this has not only saved us time and, and material, but also it's a safety factor as well. This is one of the, our best investments. Um, we also have a repair shop at headquarters that uh, services and repairs all of the metropolitan area equipment. Also, we support the outlying districts um, with the snowblower refurbish and anything that comes through our area would be glad to help out. Um, replacing a volute liner, again snowblower refurbish. We have a parts warehouse that supplies the state with all of the major items, bodies, plows, and all of the bigger items. Um, so not, not only do they supply headquarters shop with all of this materials, but also across the state. Fork cubic yard roll off dump body with push plow and sander spreader. This will be the truck that will be at the static equipment tonight and it's also known as, known as our snow fighting beast. 
We gave it that name and it stuck, so it's continued to be called our snow fighting beast. So I got a couple slides of just some equipment to, to show you what some of the stuff that we actually build at headquarters shop, and then we'll roll into a video that will explain in a little more depth. 4x4 four four with the wing plow, and then 4x4 uh, four four with the sander body, 10 yard with the plow, uh, utility body, 3 quarter ton utility body, uh, cargo bodies. This is a safety van. It'll also be at the static viewing tonight. It's a pretty neat vehicle. Um, they travel throughout the state with this. Stop by and take a look at this thing. It's really neat. It's, it's very innovative, and I think it's a great idea. Chemical injection truck for vegetation control. Um, this is, was one of the projects that we did at headquarters shop. Good luck finding a vendor to build this truck for you. It's, almost, it's impossible. Three-quarter ton survey pack. So this was an interesting concept that we used to do a uh, survey utility body. Using this, this insert, it stays as a pickup. So you can remove the insert if, if you want to turn it back into a pickup or keep it as a, a survey truck. A bridge repair truck, I do believe that there's one of these over there tonight as well. Yeah, maybe guardrail. Similar truck. A transport tractor, we just finished up a, a couple of transport tractors. Litter picker. So the sit in this basket here and the front plow pushes the debris off to the side and the person in the basket will pick it up and throw it into that, that body in the back and it has a hoist on it so it'll dump it out when you're done at the end of the day. And then a mechanics truck. And that's all I got. So I'll roll into the video if you guys want to take a quick look at this. When a piece of equipment has outlived its useful life, it's the job of Caltrans Division of Equipment's engineering and production to replace or build that equipment and ship it to the various districts throughout California. Caltrans has over 11,000 pieces of equipment ranging from sedans to the heavy equipment which makes up the Caltrans fleet. It's the job of the 350 heavy equipment mechanics to repair and maintain that fleet equipment. In addition, there are about 60 people on staff who purchase the parts and services needed to build, repair, and maintain the fleet equipment. The goal is to provide the right equipment in the right place at the right time. 65 of those mechanics work at the manufacturing facility in Sacramento. There are also body worker painters who put on the finishing touches on equipment that is being built. Caltrans purchases cabs and chassis, and then the trucks are designed by the engineers to meet the end user's needs. Our engineers work with the shop and build equipment like plow trucks, cone trucks, cargo trucks, bridge repair trucks, specialized trailers, and various other types of equipment. There are six stages of production for the plow truck. They are station number one, station number two, Station number three. Station number four. Station number five. Station number six. There are four distinct shops at the headquarters manufacturing facility. They include Shop A, where dump trucks, bridge repair trucks, and survey trucks are built. Shop B, where specialized pieces of equipment like trailers, cargo trucks, cone trucks, and mechanic trucks are constructed. Shop C is our repair shop. The work done here makes up about 15% of the activities of headquarters shop. Shop Paint and Final. This shop paints the equipment installs the decals, and conducts final inspections. Once the trucks are built, they are shipped to receiving shops in Caltrans districts throughout California. Specialized work is performed to build our high-quality plow trucks. 3D printing, also known as additive manufacturing, refers to the processes used to create three-dimensional objects in which layers of material are deposited under computer control to create the objects. Engineers print using ABS plastic or epoxy resins to create plastic parts of precise dimensions that aid in designing a truck. Computer laser cutting. This machine is a vital tool in manufacturing our equipment. It uses a focused laser beam that either melts, burns, or vaporizes the material. The mechanic specialist can cut up to 1 1 8 inch material such as steel, aluminum, and plastic. The shot blast cabinet. 
This is a very efficient tool which is used to clean, degrease, and deburr metal parts. Metal pieces, up to 8 feet in length, can be loaded into the cabinet which has a capacity of 6,000 pounds. Millions of manganese steel alloy shot, the size of a pinhead, bombard the metal parts. It takes an average of 4 minutes to prepare the metal parts and pieces for painting. This process of preparing the metal surface lessens the need for abrasive sanding discs, grinding wheels, and saves many hours of labor. The Metal Shop The metal shear can cut a half-inch steel plate that is up to 12 feet long with a touch of a switch. This is another vital tool in the manufacturing process. The metal shear has a high-pressure hydraulic system that makes metal cutting a breeze. The tool has safety guards to help prevent injuries. After cutting the metal, a press brake can be used to bend according to the specifications of the assembly drawings. The press brake also uses a high-pressure hydraulic system to bend the metal pieces. Painting. Painters use a high-quality primer paint and a single-stage process that will endure the different climate conditions in California. Temperatures can range from freezing in the High Sierra to the hottest deserts which can reach up to 120 degrees. The three paint booths have heaters that help the paint cure and include filters to safeguard the environment. Wire Harness Shop Headquarters shop mechanics manufacture the electrical wiring for the cab and chassis with the aid of sophisticated tools such as computer-controlled wire stripper, wire splicer, a seal crimp machine, and a shrink tube wire sealer. Complete wire harnesses are made for the body of the truck which includes warning lights, backup alarm, backup camera, attenuator controls, sander controls, sensors, and trailer plug. Field shops are also able to order wiring harnesses through the headquarters shop warehouse when needed. We hope this overview gives you a better understanding of the Caltrans snowplow manufacturing process and all the work that goes into producing our vehicles, which are built and maintained with pride. Thank you for watching. So at Headquarters Shop, we build on average uh, 380 units per year, and the most that we've ever done was 600 in a year. So I'd like to thank Virgil Reeland for the video, putting that together. Thank you, Virgil, and thank you, everybody, for your time. The preceding video was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found at tsp2.org. That's tsp2.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.